in a world in crisis. Can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. show called Hate, a podcast in which we explore love, hate and everything in between in search of greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I'm Nick. I'm Chris. We almost got it in the wrong oh. order. That almost went disastrously wrong. Do we have an agreed order? No. no. Well, it's usually you, Nick, then me. Well, someone has to be, I'm just saying, someone has to have a hand I'm on the third the guy. I am identified as the third guy. Oh, no. no. At Nick's wedding, I was oh, the third guy. No. Oh, so you're, you're the other one, aren't you? I'm the other one, exactly. Nick, that's me, fine. To me, you're the first guy. Thanks, Nick. You're that's on, very nice of you to phone, say. You're on the phone to me, to you're your... probably the second. <laughs> <laughs> you were on the phone to your dad earlier, weren't you? Yes. And he was asking questions about the photo shoot. The oh, that we, photo we recently shoot. Yeah. did to brand up. Say, I heard you say, like, like, who's the little guy? Yeah, that's what my dad <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> who's, who's the little one? The thing oh, is, I'll take uh, little. If people yeah. don't call me fat, I'll just be like, oh, thank you very much. No, no, surely not. No. No, nobody has. You should say like they, should, they could. Nick uh, rightly pointed out that in our new branded imagery and mm, photo shoot, mm. uh, we're each conveying kind of like a different side of hate. Yeah, like anger, disgust. Yeah, sort um, of pent up uh, yeah. release. But yeah. I think we're all displaying the wrong emotion. Like I look really angry, mm. and generally I'm more the kind of like. You're like the considered boiling background Thank rager. You. Thank you. Know, you. That's you're you're the one who, yeah, exactly. It smoulders away and destroys your internal self respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So going to come out in a murderous rampage one day. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Rayman here is our is our explosive. You know, <gasps> how dare you? <laughs> See, <laughs> you're our. Um, if this was like um, some kind of daytime panel show, you'd be like the quirky one who just you know you say what you feel. Yeah, uh, okay. like you know, I'm the Janet Street Porter in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. I didn't want to. Say, I didn't want to yeah. make any comparison yeah. to loose women. Yeah. But yeah, you're the one basically. we had to get on to get the ratings, but also are terrified might say something incredibly <laughs> yeah. incriminating every single. Just why we record it? <laughs> yeah. On uh, on today's episode, we have a behavioural psychologist. Uh, we have a respected journalist, and we have Chris Ray. <laughs> 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 I, I disagree. <laughs> we have the ratings magnet. <laughs> well, um, uh, I guess we should do the official uh, welcome and intro. Uh, hello and welcome to uh, episode six. Whoa, six good double Lord. figures. Like we're we're on two hands. I... <laughs> yes, bravo. Yeah, wow. Uh, I feel like uh, we've lost a, an episode somewhere. Like, I can't believe we're on six. The lost episode. We'll come back to well, that. Well, we were drunk during one. Oh, that's probably why. Yeah, we're very Nick, drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nick's done five. Yeah, that's We've true. probably done five and a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. four and a half. That's rounded yeah, up to the kinda, nearest five and a half. We kind of checked out towards the end of that one, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, assuming you've lasted uh, this long in listening to the show, uh, you're probably familiar with the format. If you're not, it's very simple. Each week, uh, we three, these unelected, uneducated, mm. uh, you know... Uh, maniacs. Yeah, maniacs. Thank you. I think, I think that's that was fair. Mm. Uh, we come together to discuss topics of hate and love and decide whether they are worthy of their respective emotion. And you, the listener, you... You point at me every time you do that and it's very confusing. It's I'm sorry, really, I just like getting attention to you. Yes. It's beautiful. But nobody um, can see it. Uh, yes, so uh, the listener, you, can join in using the hashtags show called love and show called hates or through Facebook. Yep. We might have to incorporate that into the page at some point so people can kind of yeah yeah that'd be good we'll work it out we'll get a forum out. now that we're branded oh of course yeah following the photo shoot yeah i guess uh we should uh, comment on that briefly uh if you have uh subscribed to us via a podcast app be it itunes or a third party app such as uh, stitcher or oh. who do i use podcast addict soundcloud soundcloud that's another one also an option yes you uh, may have noticed that the artwork has undergone a dramatic change mm. over the world. Yes. And I guess a uh, little uh, doff of the imaginary cap to you, Nick. Well, mainly to Alice, really. Because uh, she did. She took the oh, pictures. Oh, sorry. No, quite well, of course. Yeah, sorry. Come no, on, yeah. John. Sorry, yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess we've got to work it back. I guess thanks to us, first and foremost, for bringing because, our faces. Oh, yes. Great yeah. faces. Lending our image rights to the podcast. Indeed. And it, it was a hard grind pulling all those faces and getting angry and stuff. Yeah, right. and, and it's kind of amazing. It's a tough like, 20 we, minutes. We took, like, <laughs> yeah. we took like 500 pictures or so. <laughs> we took a lot. Thinking yeah. we're never going to find the perfect picture. 
and then we just found the perfect picture. It was like one of the first ones we took as yeah, well. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just <laughs> wasted time basically. Well, you gave us a very pre- you gave us twenty minutes of your very precious. I was on my way elsewhere. Yes, so I, I stopped in. Yeah. Just went right. Which camera do I look at? Chris, Chris, Money Ray. Yeah, <laughs> two of my entourage. I can give you twenty minutes and one angle. <laughs> That's all you get. You do the rest. Uh, and uh, well, I was actually just going to. You know, thank you to Ali for taking all the pictures, and thank you to you, Nick, for working your Photoshop magic. No worries. Mm. I assume you use Photoshop. I did use Photoshop, Lovely. and I use some magic as well. That's amazing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I put on my wizard's robe and hat. Mm. So yeah, so um, I think it works quite well. Yeah, no, I think it's it looks nice. good. I think it I'm happy with it. Well, to um, bring us back into format, should we dive into the hate as we normally do at the start yeah. of each episode? Let's do that. Let's do a hate. Who wants to get started? I'll go if you want. Here we yeah, go. Please do. Yeah. Peacocks. Oh. <laughs> Peacocks. Are deliberately misleading plumage to make you think they're pretty and nice. They're not. They'll have you. They'll kill you and your family. I'm pointing at you, John. <laughs> I, uh, me, me in particular. Yeah. Peacocks, peacocks are vicious killers, and what, I hate them. What's happened? What happened to you? Who Come on, you? Come on. Peacocks are vicious killers. Point, point on the peacock to where, where it touched the you. plume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who hurt you? No, I'm. You've probably seen an example of this, John, because I think we've been to wildlife parks in the past. Yeah, I, I, we, I am. We've been to I am peacock farms. So piss not. scared of peacocks. Really? Yeah. Okay. Just peacocks or any. Large I don't bird. mind so much other birds. Although, have you noticed that birds' legs looks like dinosaur legs? I have oh, noticed this. Chicken legs look yeah. like dinosaur legs. They've got legs. scales and everything. Yeah, you should write. Uh... Thesis yeah, I can. Yeah, I like, I've got a, I've got a good theory. I'll peer uh, review it. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, where did all the dinosaurs go? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like you've got it's, like a... it's like it's evolved from something. <laughs> it's like you've got one of those kind of like uh, movie, uh, you know, walls. Notice boards like yeah. putting like <laughs> yeah, exactly. walls yeah. string between everything. It's like this, this big bird, and it's like Barney the dinosaur, yeah. and like looking at him, going, uh, "Hang on, and there's <laughs> a connection here." Yeah, but no, um, I've just I think peacocks are too brave for their own good. And would probably, given half the chance, have you. If you give it a hell of a kick, it would probably... I just, off, I, I don't like it when they put their feathers out either. Everyone's gone, oh, isn't that pretty? I don't think it's the threat. I've got to, I've I think got to admit, threatening yeah, you. I've seen a peacock uh, in the flesh do that, like raise its mm, plumage. And yeah. it is a bit like, okay, oh, I'm sorry. Does it remind you of that little dinosaur from Jurassic Park? The one With the neck folds. The up its neck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, Maybe. fun fact, it's not a real species yeah, of dinosaur. Yeah. They invented that for that film. Well, it yeah. just sounds cool. What does it matter? <laughs> it does, what does what does actual science matter? Are you somehow <laughs> suggesting that the uh, the laser T Rex wasn't real? <laughs> no, that's real. Oh, that's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's science. Yeah. Stop being so facetious over there. Suggesting that Jeff Goldblum is not real. <laughs> oh, he's so real. <laughs> More real now than he's ever been. Oh. Just getting better with you know, yeah. with age. Yeah. Um, okay, just to like get to the root of this problem. Mm. Um, this is this is therapy. Now we're going into. Yeah, it. yeah. How do you feel about chickens? I'm all right with chickens in that I have looked after chickens. Mm. I didn't mind it. I would rather not do it. What about swans? Because people are afraid of swans. Yeah. People, well, swans could break your arm. That's well, what they say. They do say that. Fact. Yes. That's a well-known urban myth. I don't know if it's true. Fact. Exactly. Oh, oh fact. Okay, exactly. Cool. It's right. a fact. I, I think. Fact. I think it's like it's not so much that they can; it's that they enjoy. It's that they will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's that they will. They have a penchant. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do anything to a swan because it's like the queen's bird, isn't it? Yeah. She so rides. If, if you mess up a swan. As someone in Cheltenham did not so long ago. Well, I was just going to say, didn't Cheltenham have a spate of swan botherers? Someone shot an arrow through the swan's neck. An arrow? Because that's cool. They're all quantum linked. So whatever, what you do to one swan happens to all of them. It's mm. like it's like, a, oh. it's like when you quantum entangle two particles. And you're saying like all the swans know. Yeah. And the queen immediately knows. The queen's on it. And dispatches the, the She's swan straight guard. on the quad bike, <laughs> heading here. <laughs> <laughs> when we were riding the tra- Segway, uh, when we were riding the... Uh, yeah. When we were riding the Segway, I was like, oh, I've never known Sorry, sidebar, it. Your Honour. When we were riding the uh, underground, the London yesterday. Underground, yesterday, uh, we were commenting about whether the queen ever rides the underground. Even does, just once, commemoratively. And we were wondering whether she has her own private carriage. It's nothing but a throne on wheels. Probably. <laughs> the, queen, the queen has never gone on the underground, is, think, is what I'm saying. I think she probably has, but only like as a kind of like... It's horrible down there. Service. I think yeah. there are large subterranean corgis that, that, <laughs> patrol, <laughs> the, uh, that patrol the underground tunnels. That would make she, a lot of she sense. she rides inside those. Like, <laughs> when, uh, when Luke Skywalker sleeps inside a tauntaun. No, not Luke Skywalker. No, it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, it is Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skywalker. I thought I was... Uh, no, that's fine. In danger. No, 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 no. no. That was correct. Then. Are you still suggesting that the queen slices open a corgi every every night? It's the only way she's actually preserves her youth. Yeah, and she, doesn't the want, she doesn't want to. Run. <laughs> 
She doesn't want to ride on the dirty, dirty underground system. We had to step down into a train. That's the first time that's happened. It's like a foot lower than the platform. Yeah, yeah it was tiny. It was like it, was, it felt a lot like being inside like a toilet roll. I don't think it was oh. smaller. I think it was just lower. Just lower. Yeah. yeah further away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, going back to Bergs. Pe- oh, yes, Peacocks. It's very important that we don't digress. Yes. This podcast. We never do that. So, at one point, if it's for feet in particular... Well, it's not with Peacocks. It's just them. They look vicious. Oh, feet, and feet, are just, feet of chickens are just interesting. Mm. I challenge anyone to, to disagree with that. That could be a love. I, yeah. uh, I love chicken feet. First, you spoiled my love. No. <laughs> my first job was working on a chicken farm. Oh. And I feel like uh, a chicken on its own can be quite adorable. Well, like, like a fleet of chickens. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying like 300 chickens. Mm. Not pleasant. No, perhaps not. The smell was quite incredible, <laughs> I have to say. And, Overpowering. Uh, and have you ever seen... Oh yeah, and then there was this one chicken which was sick or dying, and you'd think like, yeah. oh maybe maybe the other chickens will take it under its wing. I bet wing. they ate it. I bet they ate it. Uh, yeah, they yeah, were, they, they were it. tearing it apart. Oh god. Yeah, it was pretty horrific actually. That's that's nasty. And they don't tell you about the the bad eggs. The bad eggs. This is like a big. Myth. Oh yeah. 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 It's like you know because. Is that go, where the phrase bad egg comes from? I think it does, yeah. All right. Yeah, I go in, you know, and you turn the electric fence off, you go inside. Okay. Is it true? Okay. Uh, turn, and, make sure you turn it off, for God's sake. You let the chickens out for the day, so, mm. they're, they're, they, so they can roam so around. So they go do their business and, you know, you know they go just financial well, sector you know, and everything. T- <laughs> <laughs> ten mil, ten mil. <laughs> Synergy. Ah. <laughs> Who's my thinking? <laughs> little <laughs> Uh And then, you know, you change the sawdust, you scoop out the poo, put water down, food down. Mm. And then you open the egg boxes and you take the eggs out. And sometimes you'll reach down and you'll pick up an egg. Okay. And then there's some eggs. Yeah. Oh. And it looks just like a regular egg. Oh. Like you go, oh, it's an egg. And you touch it and it's entirely soft. Oh. Like it's like a it's like a fake. It's like a perfect prank. Because you go to grab it and it's go. Oh. And the shell. Because you grab it a bit harder because you think it's going to resist. Yeah. And we also had an egg uh, sca- size scaling machine. Right. And uh, so, you know, you bring all the eggs back and put them on this little machine and it sorts them out. They, they go along a little conveyor belt and they get separated into like, like Wallace small, and Gromit machine. medium, large and extra large. Mm. And then you bag them up accordingly. But then you'd also get the extra, extra large, which nobody talks about because they can't be sold. Why? Because they're just so big. They won't fit inside like an egg carton. <laughs> and they're oddly Did like... Did you get them? Did you, did you take some? No, no. We just, they didn't look... I didn't really they didn't look, look like appealing. eggs. No, they so look more like a minion. <laughs> kind of like yeah. long and oh, kind of like no. like a big cylinder. Like the ki- like the toy you get in a Kinder egg. So yeah, happened, yeah, basically, yeah. What happened to those soft eggs? Why are they soft? I, I think just something went wrong. It's when the chicken's ill or something, like, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. It's yeah. what? It's when the chicken's ill, I think. Uh, something yeah. like that. Is it? Yeah. Was it just a poo? Maybe it was. What did you eat? The chicken was a bit backed up and just column just came out. So. Yeah, so chickens. Chickens I'm okay with. Liz is scared of pigeons. I like pigeons. That's the problem. I don't like pigeons. Pigeons are everywhere. They're like flying rats, pigeons. I feel pigeons get a bad... I feel sorry rap. for pigeons. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. No. I think, I think pigeons... Wankers. Pigeon wankers, <laughs> yeah. Pig, pigeons add a certain uh, je ne sais quoi. To a je city. Ne, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. That's that's the Brilliant. peak. That's the peak jokes. That's it. We're not getting it better than that's, that. That's Goodbye, the, everybody. That's the tenth pole of the episode. <laughs> Somebody take that clip. I'm telling you now, it's not going to get any better than that. Let's yeah, we it. want. Let's let's get some memes up in here. Let's. I think. Yeah, I think we've got the ep- the episode title sorted. Yeah. So <laughs> How do you write that though? How do you? I guess. Uh, I was going to call it a quantum swan. <laughs> Something like that. Based on an earlier conversation. Um, as another ch- chicken anecdote, just to give you the full, glad you corrected the yourself, full wealth <laughs> of chicken experience. Uh, I'm saying 300 chickens come towards you. That's pretty harrowing. Yeah. Uh, we also used to um, hatch chickens from eggs when I worked in the, in the school oh. lab. And a couple of those chickens... Uh, we had like 12 eggs and only two of them hatched. Did they turn into evil dictators? Is that where this is going? No, they were... Um... Evil chick <laughs> Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not as good. It's a close second. I'm trying really hard yeah, though. I'm, I'm really trying. I'll keep going. <laughs> no, it's right. me, senpai. I've got some more. <laughs> um, but uh, no, and um, first year, I think only one chicken hatched and we called it Lucky. And it turns out that the reason they weren't really hatching was because the supplier had given us like really exotic chicken breeds yeah. rather than just I just want a boring chicken I don't want a fancy chicken so he'd given us like a really fancy like uh, prize winning like uh, <laughs> ornate chickens and it turns out they're super infertile so oh. the, so the only one that hatched turned out to be the only one kind of like strong enough to like and it turned out it was it was it was a breed of chicken called a buff Orpington 
and it was just like yellow and gigantic. Oh, and, oh that chicken's getting bigger. Oh, I wonder when it will lose its uh, baby fluff and turn like a... a, a it was a chocobo, wasn't it? It was just yellow. And really? it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was, it was basically a hench chicken. It was like, yeah, chirp. Must so much swall. Hey, check out the chicken. Chirp. <laughs> yeah. Chirp. Chirp. <laughs> like that family guy with that pig with fists. <laughs> and it just goes, oink. <laughs> There we go. Uh, um, so sorry. Yeah, what was your question? Keep hijacking, yeah. hijacking <laughs> the peacocks. Uh, something, something about peacocks. Um, I've been to zoos where they often let the peacocks roam peacocks free. roam free at zoos. Yeah, on like lawns of stately homes. And exactly. Mm. And I, I just think they don't want me to be there, and they know that I'm afraid of them. They can smell it. They can smell the fear. Have they follow me. Do they? Mm. Ah, I've had a peacock follow me around before. There's a thing um, in sort of in in country circles where um, it's called oh what is it people. Have <laughs> I'm doing really well. Go on, Nick. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to use my words. Here Take it comes. Time. Fox followers or fo- people who who foxes follow them. I can't say. I can't get it out. Right. It's a thing. So some right. people are unnaturally attractive to foxes. Yeah, and so. foxes oh. follow them, and this is a thing. Or is it right. like a pheromone? Maybe. Someone's giving. I don't know. Off. I think it's believed that like, in the same sort of Glastonbury people who believe in magic and crystal healing and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. It's like it's part and parcel of that. It's like oh, I'm, I'm a fox follower. It's got a name. I follow follow foxes, fox um, followers. A butcher, maybe. <laughs> maybe they smell like meat. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> but maybe you've got that for peacocks. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Peacock followers. Maybe the peacocks. Followist. Followist. Maybe the peacocks feel uh, threatened by your natural musk flair. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I doubt that's it. But thank you. No, it's all right. They've got natural flair. Peacocks. We don't have rhythm. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> I've noticed like peacocks, the, the free roaming ones, they do seem to like to climb on roofs. That's a little distracting. Just, I just Can they fly? I'm not sure, actually. Because that's terrifying. I should look that up. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming for you. Yeah. I just, I just think there's something sinister about peacocks. Mm. I feel like they're hiding something. Oh, you, see, you feel like the act of looking so beautiful. And... I think it's a trick. Ah. It's a ruse. Exactly. I swear once I was driving back, because we grew up in the same village. Oh yes, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah it was formative years. I remember uh, driving past uh, like a little, um, entering the village, and there's like a little cul-de-sac on the right, and I looked, and I'm driving past, and I looked to the right, and I swear for the split second while I'm passing that cul-de-sac, I swear I saw an albino peacock. Yeah, you probably, yeah, oh yeah, there is such a, such a thing. Yeah. I'm sure it exists, but what it was does, it doing in Al- completely white. What was it doing in yeah, our village? Yeah, completely white peacock. There's one in Kung Fu Panda too. But that's not that's not real. Is so, he a bad guy? He is. Ah, yeah. you see. Yeah, and also that's graphical. Oh, that's um. I thought it was a documentary. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know is the answer to your question. Well, what I'm it was so, doing in our village? Well, you feel like that kind of thing would be noteworthy. Not a lot happened in our village. Well, considering that some of the stuff Gloucestershire Live puts on Twitter these days, yeah, that probably oh would God, be news. You, sorry, sidebar. Didn't you? The headline was something like "cat seen outside shop." <laughs> it was cat on a lead. <laughs> Was yeah. seen outside a shop, and I just I just quoted it and just put news. <laughs> <laughs> but surely, like, if you Rock spotted bottom. that, the more exciting story would have been: I'm going to wait for the owner to come out, and I'll interview them. Yeah, and that's a feature. Yeah, I've seen someone walking a ferret on a lead in Cheltenham. Mm, cool. That's more interesting than that a cat is. on a lead. Stop the presses. Yeah, uh, I could have sold that for thousands. Twenty three is good. Ooh, yeah. or like a turnip on a lead. Turnip on a lead. Would be a good that's one. probably a crazy man on a skateboard. <laughs> could, be a, could be a weapon. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Be a yo yo. <laughs> <laughs> I have eaten, just to kind of, if this makes you feel better, I've eaten chicken feet. Or I've tried to eat chicken feet. Have you eaten peacock meat? Yeah. Because I think Chris could you eat, like Could you eat a peacock? I would, I would well, love I mean, to eat a peacock. I think it would help me. I mean, there's yeah, could, should, and would, would, really. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll do a televised episode where you eat a living peacock. That'd be good. When, I, we, do our, when we do our live show. <laughs> we'll bring I, a peacock on stage. What? That's just, just be me going, it. Rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> like cackling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have a cage peacock and then you have a peacock like breast like on a plate yeah. and you eat it in front tell your friends what you saw <laughs> oh yeah tell your other bears what you saw <laughs> <laughs> um, there's not a lot of meat on a chicken foot funny, no, that, no. funny that I don't yeah. know why you'd want to eat that I know it sounds really tough and horrible and yeah ugh. I mean when you think about it it's like the foot and then a very thin layer of skin and you're really just eating the skin but generally people are disgusted by feet generally mm, just yeah. because and, and I, th- I understand why because we walk on them all the time they're generally quite smelly they can be quite dirty yes a bit they, cheesy yeah. the, part, the part of you that sees the most sort of work and filth in a way yeah why would you ever choose that part of an animal to eat they don't wear socks 
Exactly. So they don't they don't protect their feet. They're yeah. walking around on the horrible shitty oh, grass yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah, and they all just shit everywhere. They don't walk in their own shit. You can boil a chicken's foot till the cows come home, but I'm not all the chickens come home. <laughs> I still know where it's I'm, been. I still know where it's been. Yeah, I still know where it's been, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get the idea of like, you know, not wasting any part of a buffalo, you know, like Lexi yeah. and everything, but like do you have to eat the feet? It's like sucking a hoof. <laughs> I wouldn't do that either. Yeah. Like, oh, here's a pickled hoof, son. I might enjoy. Might keep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Dad, you your teeth me. falling out. I might keep a hoof on my desk. Use it like a prit stick. <laughs> 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 so, what's the? Uh, I mean, what's the consensus on peacocks? Are you right to hate them? You tell me. Well, Why are you yeah. asking me? No, I do. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't have strong feelings towards peacocks. I mean, uh, I, I just, feel. I think they're a bit cocky. Mm. And I didn't mean that as a pun. Like, I think they are quite cocky. Oh, we know. <laughs> 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 um. Is it maybe, I feel, if you're going to hate peacocks, I think you have to hate more birds. Okay. No, 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 I accept just hating peacocks. There are some birds that they are nice. They are pretty, like, different. But is it is it an issue of... I feel threatened by peacocks. I just don't think I hate them. That's what I'm saying. Are you threatened because you feel they'll hurt you? Yes. Or are you... Okay, so you're right. afraid of them. I'm afraid of them. Or are you challenged by their beauty? This isn't by their outlook on life. Um, yeah. I don't know. No, to... if, no, if I was jealous of other being's beauty then I wouldn't get anything done to be honest <laughs> um, oh, 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 oh. but no I, I'm afraid they will attack me and hurt my family wow there you go okay, okay well I think uh, I think we can all agree that you hate peacocks I hate peacocks I think we can all agree that your hate is a very personal experience and yes. yeah, who are we to judge exactly I we won't judge I do need some therapy <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> um uh, Shall I go next? Yeah, go next. My hatred is uh, this week. Uh, hate hatesters. <laughs> yeah, I, fellow hatesters. Uh, I think I hate writers. Oh, oh, how ironic! That is interesting. Uh, and I'm aware that uh, I'm aware that I've written some stuff in the past. You have written. Yes, oh, yes, you do write. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not saying this is a way of saying. Oh, look at John. He can put pen to paper. <laughs> I actually just mean. <laughs> no, nobody nope. puts pen to paper. Anymore, no, no John. one was thinking that. <laughs> My granddad, yeah. Uh, I just feel because um, we are entering Nano Rimo. Are you familiar with that? It, no, that sounds like something you've just made up. No, it is a thing. It is a. Uh, Why is it called that? I, break it down. I think it's like some national right. Oh, novel just month. Just say that. Nan- no, no, month. no na- uh, national. Novel, novel, n- novel, novel writing, writing, month. writing month. National national novel na- writing. No yeah. Rimo. Yeah. Basically, um, I... It's a bit uh, rubbish. Just say it. Yeah. yeah. Just say it. I'm These taking... people are writers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why shorten it? Yeah. Why make up a new word and make more work for yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm basically, but basically, we're entering NaNoWriMo, which is, as the name suggests, you have a month to try and write a book. The name suggests nothing. Well, it, it, the idea is that... <laughs> that is true. The idea is that you could do... Uh, for written communication, that's pretty shit. <laughs> 50,000 words. Oh, that sounds like a lot. In a month. And it's... It's meant to be a tool to kind of like help people get started. If you kind of like, I want to write a book. I see. I'm saying now, do it. Seize the day. They see it. They're saying, look at all these other people doing it. You should too. And I think when I say that I hate writers, I think what I actually hate is this weird attitude around writing, mm. where it's like it's everyone seems to think that like being a writer is like wearing a beret and smoking like very long cigarettes. <laughs> like a typewriter. So I think I'm sitting in a Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. So I think my is. caveat is it's writers subtitle. Writers on social media, yes. Because I, I, knowing that, like, I just feel like, but you, you're, you're suggesting it's people who want to be seen to be writing rather than actually writing. Yeah, no, and I'm not actually not writers but, at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, and actually, because I, I bring up Nana Rimo because I'm not saying I'm not bringing this up as a thing that like, oh, look at all these people trying to write. I think actually that's wonderful. What I find annoying are the people who have written stuff mm. suddenly being like the experts on everything yes. and yeah. going like, hey man, like this is how you do it. And there seems to be so much like pressure and weight on people to get skied. And at the same time, I just want to be like, hey guys, like... Do what you want. There are a lot of different... Like, you can write whatever you want. Like, or write it however you want to write. There is no kind of... And I think the issue I get at is, if you're an artist and you want to show off your work online, you put up a picture. Yeah. And mm. everyone goes, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Or Take not. it. Face yeah. value. Yeah. But if you're a writer and you want to... Imp- there seems to be this kind of like subtext of, I'm a writer, therefore... 99% of my time is spent on social media <laughs> trying to be smart, basically. I also think writers have a harder time proving that they are a writer. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because I think 
everyone thinks they're a writer. Yeah, and to some extent, everybody is. Whereas, you know, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, because we've all we've all been taught to write at school. We all had to write essays and dissertations and all that malarkey. So, to some level, we can all put pen to paper, as you say, and write two, three, ten thousand words at a push. So, for you to prove that you are a writer, like a badge that you can wear on your writer's uniform that you take to work at Writing Corp. You know, you really have to do something that sets you apart from everyone else. Whereas an artist, you know, if, if someone can't draw, it's pretty apparent they can't draw. Yeah. Mm. And also, like, you know, you say, hey, I wrote like a, I wrote like a 200,000 word novel and it's great and I'm really good. And no one's going to, like, in 30 seconds, nobody's going to go, oh, yeah, I'll read that. And, yeah. And they're like, clearly you are great. Maybe when you get to the end of like yeah, 2000. Yeah, there's more time involved. They go like, it. oh, really good. But because you can't look at a, a paragraph and go, oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, so or, true. Yeah, you yeah, need like a bit yeah. of time to do it. And it's like, and I, I I just feel, I don't know, I just feel like there's a certain, and I'm, I've been guilty of it, maybe I am still guilty of it, but I feel there's a certain element of, with the internet and a mouthpiece, and this element of, look at me, I'm amazing. It's like people spend a lot more time talking about how great they are than actually just mm. trying to be great. I'm I like, think this plays as well into my, um, we, we've talked about this before as well, the whole like unwarranted criticism which comes from apparent experts in the field and they'll give you feedback on your stuff, which you never asked for at all. Yeah. And it's like, what suddenly gives you the right? Like, granted, I might think you are a better creator in whatever field we're in than me, but I didn't ask for your feedback and you're suddenly coming back to me like you're some grand sensei, like you know better than me. It's like, I didn't ask for this. And there's this there's this sort of self-inflatory concept to it, isn't there? It's just like, I'm great. You should listen to me and my yeah. tips. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's like, you know, because it's like, you're writing your story, right? Yeah. Do it how you want to do. Yeah. Like, find your own style and whatnot. Like I don't know. I just I, I find but I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the right words. I'm I'm just sort of thinking it's not necessarily how you do it. It's how much people enjoy it once you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. In that it's not it's not about saying oh I'm a writer I've done this that and the other, whatever. Cool. Nice yeah. one. If people enjoy it, then that's really your ultimate goal, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. There isn't like a list of check boxes that if you hit all of, you are definitely a writer. Yeah. And I think like, a lot of people spend, they spend too much time, I feel, talking about the golden craft of writing. Oh, God. Like, you know, or the, the art of it. Like, That's I'm horrible. Like, and I'm like, just write. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I, I don't mean that to be like facetious because I know it's harder for some people than others. But I mean like, what's important is what you produce. Mm. What's not important is how clever you are. Yeah. As, mm. as a, Writer, I've seen a similar thing in uh, it does it doesn't really equate but like in art when people will rave like they'll do a sort of average piece of artwork but they'll go on and on about like the size pencil lead they hmm. use and I used to I used a 3.8 12 gauge Schneider's pen which uh, oh, not many people can get hold of you know and uh, and that really sets my line art in the in the background apart from my foreground lines and you're like if yeah, your drawing's a bit shit yeah that you're wasting you... that precious pencil that Schneider pen that you bought give me that Schneider pen <laughs> I'll show sure you want to do a Schneider yeah. pen. I made that up, by the way. Stick it up your ass. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I believe that was inferred. No. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. But maybe, maybe I think maybe this just ties into some like old man lock. Yeah, I am old man lock. But I feel like it, I think if, if 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 in episode one for my hatred I had just said Twitter, I would have had nothing to talk about for the remainder of this no, show. You've got to be like ever. Yeah. I think. So, I, I think a lot of this just ties into some of my frustrations with social media. Where... Yeah, but it's a specific subset of creative and specifically writing creative people on social media. I think that's really what we're yeah. tying this down to. And just to like utterly clarify, I'm not. This is the, the hatred here is not. Oh, look at these people trying to write. No, 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 no. no, no I no, actually no. commend that entirely. I think my hatred is simply kind of like snobbish, established it's writers, elitism coming down yeah. on them, yeah, being yeah. show offy. You've got to do it this way. Yeah. Like if you're not. It's like, oh, if you don't spend four hours a day writing, you're not a real writer. Or yeah. if you don't... If you, you don't know, do character arc plots, then you're not a real writer. Yeah, or... if you've never drawn an emotion web. <laughs> you know. An, e an emo web, to shorten it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Emo web. Isn't that Spider-Man? <laughs> emo web. Isn't that the, the, the subtitle of Spider-Man 3? I'm sure it is. Emo web. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, cinemas this summer. Hashtag emo web. Emo web, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> So yeah, that's about, and that's also like, I don't know, just pretension in general. Yeah, that's true. It plays into that. Do your own thing. Have fun. Fair play. No, I agree with that. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Great. Very All good. right. Well, that was concise. I feel validated. Yeah, yeah that's good. Bring, bring it. Bring okay, it. mine's a bit uh, hard to explain, and I'm not good with words today, so it's going to be awful. But my thing is like hiding overt sexual uh, content in 
um, places that it, it, it shouldn't be in, as in public consumed stuff. Okay, right. I feel... So that sounds, wow. that sounds very general. I'll give you an example. Please do. There is a song, and I, this plays into my very first episode's hatred, where mm. I listened to Radio 1, and I shouldn't uh, do yes. it because I'm a grown man, and I should, have, I should have grown out of that. But there is a song currently in the charts, and the, the, the leading line in the chorus is, you know I'll go wild if I don't get to eat in the morning. Right. And it's sung by a very sexy sounding woman. She's deliberately upping the sexualization. Right. You know, I'll go wild if I don't get to eat in the morning. It's very, it's very obvious. I think what she's talking about there. Pancakes. <laughs> well, this is it. She's not talking about breakfast. She's whoa, not talking whoa. about food. What do you mean? She's not talking about food. Oh. This is what I mean. Oh. Do you want me to spell it out? Rayman appears to be having a stroke <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> but this is what annoys me about it, right? Mm. Because because like that is that is just hiding like porn in plain sight. Basically, that's that's that should be the title of it: hiding porn in yeah. plain sight. Mm. You're not allowed to say I I go wild if I don't get to eat dick in the morning. <laughs> you're not you're not allowed to say that because your your song won't be in the charts then, will it? It won't be. <laughs> Certainly not the classical charts. I'm telling no. you. I won't get ahead on Radio One. No, oh, oh, Ray- <laughs> oh Rayman's dead. Rayman's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's off, Mike. He's off. He's off. Oh my God. So, so oh. this, uh, this is my point, right? Is that like you can't you can't say it. So don't try. Don't try and do a pathetic little. Oh, I know. I'll squeeze this past there? the prepubescent kids that what? listen to Radio One. Just to play devil's advocate. What if they're like? Sorry, Raymond's still recovering. <laughs> what if they are like, they're they're like they're counterculture man, and they're oh. fighting like if you were counterculture, conservative mindset. You don't give a and... shit about self censoring. This is my point. Go either way. I'm all up for listening to a song where the lyrics are, you know, I eat dick in the morning. Wow, I listen to that song. <laughs> it was back. a good song. Yeah, you know, love it. <laughs> Equally, Cal- Cal- you, know, there's, you know that song, uh, my neck, my back, for example. There's more yeah. lyrics to that. Calvin oh, Harris did himself. Yeah. They went all in with that song. Yeah, credit to him. Yes, that can't be played on Radio 1, but they don't want to be played on Radio 1 because they're, they're rebels, man. They've got punk ethos flowing through their veins. But these people, these fuckers, they're hiding it. Mm. They know that they know they can't really say it. They don't have the balls to actually say it, but they, they also want to for some reason. But what if, is, it, is the issue that they also want it to chart? Is that your, your problem? Um, no. Because as you say, like, you'd have no problem... If they were just outright saying, "Hey, like we like we like making explicit songs, and that's our funk, and that's cool," yeah, yeah. and you're like, "It's a cool song. I enjoy listening to it," and everybody's fine. It's all kosher above board. But you're saying like, but that probably oh, wouldn't get yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't ever get to be in the chart because of the nature of its content. yeah. Because Radio One would be like, no, "We can't play that. It's too explicit. Yeah, so we, you're gonna be subtle with your yeah." It's but then surely this is selling out. Explicity. Surely this is a definition of selling out. Well, surely, well, surely selling out would be I don't know. Because then if you were selling out, you'd be like, man, I really want to make explicit songs, but I'm never going to have a number one if I do that. So mm. I'm make a song about puppies and rainbows. This yeah. is like this weird middle ground where they're like... But there's a lot of Christian it's, it's, rock bands that end up becoming just regular bands. In yeah. The end, and, but they've obviously built up a core audience and they've now, and then they can just progress it from there. So maybe yeah. they're just trying to play it safe until they have enough fans and then they can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. Maybe. But I just, I just feel like there's, I, I just feel like there's some sort of because it's not just that they want popularity, but they also... It's like not that they just want to have their cake and eat it. I feel like there's also an aspect of trying to sneak something dirtier and naughtier into a place where it's not... Where, you know, kids are going to be listening to that. Yeah. There, I've, got other exam- I've got another example as well. More a general example. Anime does it yes. really, really badly. So anime is like, oh, we, we want our show to be family friendly. Chris. John. These are... Those Japanese cartoons. Oh, these big eye oh, thank cartoons. You. Right, thank yeah. you. Thank you for yeah. clarifying that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So they'll often have a show that they believe and um, is sort of pushed out and marketed as though it is. Yeah, you know, anyone can enjoy this. There's no swearing. There's no nudity. Yeah. No, there isn't. Good. But there is that girl with the giant tits <laughs> with that really, really low cut top. Yeah. And it's like, why is she there if you're trying to make a family friendly show? This is th- yeah. This is interesting as well because like we used to have a Crunchyroll. In the house, <laughs> which is a bit like Netflix, but for anime. Oh, I understand. Don't know why it's called Crunchyroll. No, I think really it's some reference to Japanese food, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and like, it's weird that it was a completely like there were no restrictions. Like you know, like, if you buy mm. Netflix, you can set up like Netflix Family. Yes, yes. so you don't yes. yes. show like kid friendly yeah, movies yeah. or whatever. Mm. You can password protect it. Crunchyroll is just it's completely universal, G rated, family friendly. Everything's accessible, and. You know, we, we would just browse and go like, oh, hey, what should we, you know, let's pick up a random anime, check it out. 
and, and that thumbnail not... image wouldn't give anything away. Yeah, it looked and... like some sort of you know adventure fantasy quest standard sort of, sort of thing. Like, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's give that and, a shot. And 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 then we turn it on, and we used to have a joke like, how how far can we get into the episode before we hit essentially porn? Yeah, like how how before it's just porn and soft core, but really pushing it, like, like really what... unnecessarily. Pushing yeah, it. really doesn't add anything to the story. And it would kind of hit, and we were like, oh well, there it is. You know, bang. Oh geez, the and worst was like worse. six seconds in. Once we set timers, didn't we? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was like a game, so we'd like start a timer on the phone, press play. And once it was six seconds before there was just like the screen was just filled with a pair of bouncing boobs. Yeah. And, mm. and like really quite gratuitous to the point where we were like, I, I think the issue is, and maybe this is what you're saying with the music thing. It's like, if you want to watch like porn or you want to watch like the bouncy cartoon boobs. And the bouncy bouncers. <laughs> <laughs> was, Check out those dilly dallies. <laughs> Fine. Cool, you know, go, go to there. Let's be honest. This person goes, "I'm a pornographer, and I'm making this. I'm making boob art. I'm making this porn." And you go, "I enjoy pornography. I'm going to watch it. Great. <laughs> no, that, that might be the name of the episode. Actually, <laughs> I enjoy pornography. I enjoy pornography. <laughs> I'm saying like everyone's happy. Put two and two together. It's when they're ostensibly because it's marketed as like it's not marketed as like this is over eighteen or over. And yeah. that's my big problem with yeah. it. Yeah, is that like what well, I don't understand why they're doing it. And I can, and, and and the only thing that I can jump to is this is this sort of divisive, sort of underhand plan. I'll get some naughty stuff in for the kids. You know, it's like why? Yeah, it's, it's maybe just... not even that. It's maybe even more cynical than that. In that they're deliberately putting something provocative in to get people talking about it. Maybe, and here we are. And here we are. Uh... Yeah, I guess maybe we're the assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But are they like? I don't know. Do you think they're pushing the boundary? Like, at what point? Like, well, the boundary is constantly being pushed. In that regard, with swearing as well. It's yeah, the same no, sort of it thing. is. And the thing is, like, I don't want this to come across as like I'm a prude or I don't like swearing or I don't like violence and nudity and stuff because I really do. <laughs> like, I really do. I love <laughs> like, like nude I'm, violence is on my favourite. Nude, nude <laughs> swearing violence. <laughs> it's just constant fuck. Like, I love it, but it's like I I go to it when I know where it is. Yeah, and then I go to other places for other things. Yeah, I'm just I think honesty. Yeah. I just think that's what it is. It. It's like, don't pick up the Blair Witch Project if you want to watch a comedy. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that'd be the same thing. Like, having a comedy, mm. but then, like, sneaking, like, really graphic, like, human centipede style, yeah. like, And what if you're watching it with into... your kids, you know? And you're yeah. like, oh, no, I've got to turn up. This, is, this is very inappropriate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's what annoys me about it. Yeah, right. It's the honesty of it. Just be above board. If it's porn, it's porn. It's fine. Well, you know you were saying, like, with um, swearing, and, like, pushing mm. boundaries of swearing and stuff. When you just out of interest, when you were growing up, what if any swear words could you say in the house, or what was like the strongest uh, words well, you'd say with your family? I mm. accidentally dropped the f bomb once, like I, very accidentally. It was a, I was watching a football match, but I was still twelve, thirteen, and I just went fucking get in, <laughs> and my mum went, "What did you say?" And she wasn't happy. <laughs> well, can... Fart used to be considered a very rude word in my house. True, really? true story. Yeah, like fart was like, oh my god, what are you saying? I once did something really disgusting. I was, I was upstairs with my brother. We were out of earshot of my parents. Do we want to hear this? Yeah, yeah, you do. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Um, and I told, I dared him to say the word fuck by writing it down on a bit of paper oh. and showed it to him. And then he did. He went fuck, and then just went downstairs and told on him. Wow. <laughs> That was, that was such a dick move. That was my Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and then they called him down. I was like, what did you say? Your brother just told me that you said something horrible. And he was like, but I just read it off a bit of paper. And then <laughs> I, don't know and I was means. like, no, he didn't. Brilliant. He just said it. <laughs> and you're like eating the paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember like, um, I seem to remember in, the, in primary school, like guff got used. Guff, guff was yeah, a funny Yeah, guff word. was a good one. Yeah. yeah. I should bring that, bring that back. Yeah. Stiffy as well. <laughs> Stiffy was amazing. <laughs> Stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> we should bring that back. Oh Thank God. you for tuning in to another family-friendly episode <laughs> of a show called Hey. Yeah, oh, we're very honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're upfront about this because yeah. we put We've explicitly on the right? iTunes. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, was, there you go. I see. know. Now I feel we have nothing to hide. What? <laughs> 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 big, big boobs. Oh, oh that's a, that. You stepped over the line. Yeah, there. I know. I probably yeah. probably crossed the line. Would you we'll, have any, we'll uh, that. Do you have any thoughts on this, Raymond? I, I agree with the principle. I wouldn't watch. I wouldn't want my niece, for example, engaging mm. in the sort of song lyrics and things that you may not expect to be in a television show, but then are. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, I get it that kids won't get that lyric. Yeah. But but what annoys me is that they'll probably sing it. I'll sing mm. it on the playground yeah. and be like, "Yeah, they don't get to eat in the morning." You know, it's just like, oh, but then your parents will listen to them but singing that, it. Like... Isn't it? Has it always been this way, or do you only? Is this like? part of growing up where you only notice it when you hear it maybe because you're like it seems like like certainly the top 
20 or like the charts, you know, Hit Radio parade. 1, yeah. Well, the, the That's con- all about sex. Yeah, music that the t- contemporary youth are listening to. It, it's pretty like, it is all about, yeah, as you said. Yeah. Like, because I seem to remember like when we, when we were like, maybe like teenagers and so, I feel like a lot of the charts was that kind of sappy like Westlife kind of yeah like uh, boy and girl band stuff it was a bit yeah, yeah. and it was all I about mean, that said Oasis did sing a song about taking cocaine which was in the top 10 <laughs> that's true which one was that cigarettes and alcohol oh there's a lyric yeah. that says you might as well do the white line ah. that's in the song that was in the charts so it's all a yeah, spectrum I mean, am, I, am I here am I like attacking like if, there, if music professionals were listening to this song they'd be yeah. like you're attacking the, the lifeblood of music which is using poetic inference to talk about edgy like cool pop culture stuff because that's what the kids want they want to yeah. listen to music that's aspirational to a more rebellious lifestyle mm. and if we if we censored everything nick if that's what you want <laughs> then every, everything would just be christian rock and that's not what i'm saying though is that you can sing about edgier stuff you can sing about like some stuff you just don't have to be i feel like it's being like deliberately explicit yeah mm. there's, I, there's a there's a line they've and i feel a lot of this is about trying to be in the mainstream yeah exactly as well which again plays into the lack of honesty. Yeah. Like, what do you are, are you really cutting edge and like trying to break the mold, and you know do really bold lyrics, or are you just trying to make some money? Because let's yeah. be honest, here, you're trying to make some yeah. money. Yeah, aren't like you? just go, just go do your own thing. I mean, because you know, I think we all grow up just listening to what we hear in the charts, what we, we top of the pops back in the day. That's, yeah, that's exactly. Dating it now, isn't it? Go uh, top of the pops. Yeah. They're talking about bringing that back. Pop of those tops. Yeah. Wow. Pop off those Pop tops. off those tops. That's my latest song. <laughs> that's a, that's a very different friendly. show. To everyone. That's <laughs> a very different that's show. I took it off the air. Crying out loud. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I can agree with you. I, I, I think it's sad that, like, I don't know. I feel like as an adult or something like approaching an adult. Yeah, maybe, not really an adult. I feel like at least if I can make my own informed yeah. choices and we stuff. Can. Yeah. I just feel it's telling that I feel the primary audience for, like, the top 20 is maybe, like, 12, 13, 14 yeah, year olds. Definitely. And I think it's kind of sad that that is like hyper... It's hyper sex as well. It's not yeah, even like... It's not... Re- that's the thing. You're absolutely right. It's not even like real sex. It's not even like... <laughs> like if you're about that, would be awful. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a recording. I'll put a towel down. <laughs> oh, God, no. oh, no. Not again. I'm crying because I'm happy. <laughs> oh, God. Whose leg it? is that? <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should pull up. Yeah, yeah. Before we ruin it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Moral I, high ground. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, Nick. Thanks, John. Yes, me too. Also. Thanks, Chris. That's all right. Should we uh, check out some hate mail? Yes, yeah. I've got some hate mail Choo-choo, here. Thomas. Uh, I've got one here from Cy, which I assume is short for either cyanide or seismic. Yeah. Um, seismic Cy. Si. That's his wrestling name. <laughs> TV adverts made by banks. And then I'm going to do a voice because he's put it in quotation marks. Oh, good. Oh, we've got your best interests at heart. We've been helping your family since the 1700s. We just give you your sentimental tie back that we found on the bus and we help Scooby-Doo catch a bad guy. Aren't banks super nice? And then he, I'll return to my normal voice. No, mother truckers, you aren't. And I can prove it with one number, 2008. You're the same bunch of bastards you were back then. Ooh. You're just giving it to, giving it stacks to make people forget. Breathes. Yeah. Oh, he breathes. Oh. I, um, after after did, ranting did, did with he that. Write, did he write breathes? He wrote, he wrote breathes, yeah. Ah, I see. Um, I agree with this. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with the one that the bloke leaves a scarf on a bus and then the woman returns it. Yeah. I don't care. What's it's my interest rate? So heartwarming. <laughs> my interest rate in that advert is zero. Oh, oh see, I was it. That was good, wasn't it? That was a very you, good you, joke. You should be writing ads for him. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do, you uh, do you have an emotional web I can use to write an advert? You talked about it earlier, an emotional web for oh, writing. I need, I need yeah. an email web. Sorry, I've become too attuned to the hashtag. I was just going to, I can only respond to email web. <laughs> send, send help. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, no, they are a bit manipulative, I, I think. Is there, a lead, is there a leading UK bank right now, which is advertising using entirely uh, Hanna-Barbera characters? Yes. Like, oh, it's, uh, Fred Flintstone's in one, isn't he? Halifax. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Halifax. But isn't that sad? Like, is I, it one of them using He-Man, or is that another one? Is that a different thing? <sighs> there's one with Skeletor in it, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, that's Compare the Market. Is it? Oh yeah, maybe it is. Anyway, Jesus. yeah. I mean, who thought you'd live to see an age? Well, I don't want to see Fred Flintstone getting a mortgage rejected. Like, <laughs> because his house is made of <laughs> like cartoon stone. goes in an odd direction. Where, hello, Mr. Flintstone, how can I help you? I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to remortgage my house. You can't. <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Flintstone, but the cat keeps locking you out, so I can't possibly approve you for a mortgage. <laughs> well, the nationwide logo just comes up. <laughs> <laughs> and, in, and in the background, he's being dragged out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bailiffs. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's weird. I mean, I guess they're using those car 
cartoon, using one particular example, they're using these mm. cartoon characters because they know that that's going to resonate with people of a certain age. Or maybe yeah, they know, there's something they know we enjoyed as children, which might make us feel a bit softer towards them. But oh, I God, that, yeah, we're being directly marketed, yeah, aren't we? I found that so manipulative, where it's like... I, I didn't even think of that. Mm. If Top Cat, if I walked into a bank and Top Cat was there, getting up to shenanigans, I, I mean, would leave that would hastily. Be, I mean, hella crazy if there was a cartoon character in the real world yeah, no, already. I'd walk straight to the doctor yeah. and renew my, med- my medication. And what, if, what if the doctor was Dr. Mario? You know, and he just threw a massive cartoon pill at you. <laughs> <laughs> this world gone mad. Yeah. <laughs> and then you try to leave, but it turns out it's just like a board that Wiley e. Coyote's put up for Roadrunner. Yeah. And you just walk and you straight into it. Yeah, John shaped silhouette like, hole in nightmare. it. Nightmare. And then an anvil drops on you. <laughs> I think like <laughs> things unless unless somebody comes up with a brand new system and does away with money, uh, I think we're kinda of stuck with banks, really, aren't we? I don't think they're going anywhere. Banks, yeah, we are. If you want my honest opinion, maybe this plays into the honesty thing again. Just be like, we're we're blood draining twats. We're going to take your money. We don't have a choice nationwide. <laughs> we will give you five pounds a month if you bank with us. Yeah, all right. Then. Yeah. yeah, that's all I need. Yeah, that to be fair. Yeah, just leave with the money thing. I don't like. Ge- this is generally speaking. I don't like any companies that use big movie stars to promote them because okay. that's my money. You've used my money to make get Ryan Reynolds, for example, oh, that's true. onto this advert. That's my money. Just make my thing cheaper. I own. Don't hire Ryan Reynolds. Make my <laughs> costs less. I own zero point zero two percent of Ryan Reynolds now. Yeah, it's yeah. like a You think he did BT adverts? I cancelled BT after that. Did really? You? Yeah. Wow, that's right. a hell of a statement. Like I can't. Well, it was just taking the piss. They kept putting my prices up. Fucking Ryan Reynolds. That's why. Yeah. How? I think. I, I think a bank trying to be heartwarming is marginally better than a bank trying to be cool. And I would like to submit to you... Oh, no. The old... Okay, may, any listeners in the UK are not going to get this at all, but the bank, I think it was Halifax again, used to do those radio shows. Oh, yeah. Do you remember those? I don't know if I do. The adverts were awful. It was... The, I don't know what the premise... The premise is I so... I saw Baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I remember that. Just the worst thing ever committed to, oh. to the screen. The basic premise is, hey, what if your bank ran a radio station mm. and then what if like we had a film crew in the station filming no. what does that say about a high interest saving account i do not know no. and i can't work out if they were real employees who were awful or actors who were awful mm. but it's one of the most cringy things i've ever seen in my, in my well life. howard from the halifax who you i was trying remember, to remember his name he yeah. actually did work for the halifax before See, that, cause that's because they did the a whole campaign they did they, where they were using real employees from real banks yeah. and howard became a sort of mini celebrity because he actually had a bit of screen charm yeah. Yeah. Was he? Was he he, he worked as just a cashier Halifax, yeah. originally at the Halifax, yeah. and then they, he, as you say, he did this X Factor version of the Halifax, or vice versa, and ended up on these ads. Jesus. Well, what is it about Halifax then? I feel like they're the offender in like each of these instances. Well, I don't bank with Halifax. Well, there we go. Why? I don't bank with Halifax. No. Yeah. This episode is sponsored you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sponsored, by. sponsored you by Santander, the best bank out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. Don't don't toy with my emotions. Banks. Yeah, no, I do agree with that. I'm all, I'm all in with um, with cyanide. Yeah, cyanide. Um, so I've got one here from Matt Dyson, no relation, uh, who says people doing <laughs> their own fireworks show in the gardens. This is a very relevant one because ah. it's ah. the fifth of November today. Indeed. Um, is that actually today? I think it is today. Firework boom boom. Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah look at that. <laughs> firework boom boom day. People yeah. doing their own fireworks show in their gardens. They'll start at 10 p.m. Brackets. Screw people with kids and animals. Yeah. I think it's a whole separate issue. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And launch one every 10 to 20 minutes. Also, people Uh, with kids and animals. Can't stand them. Just save the money you wasted and go to a show. They have a better display, safety equipment, and it'll be less than half price of one of your crappy fireworks from Tesco. Okay, well, here's a question. Has anyone in this room purchased and or lit their own fireworks? No. Yes. Okay. How what month go? was it? <laughs> um, I did it. We did it every year at uni in our house garden. And I've done it with friends since then as well. I've done it off the roof of our flat, I think, as well, uh, when I was living in town. That's, that, did it not terrify you? Oh, yeah, scary. Yeah, but, it, but, it, but I mean, it's, it's very easy to not screw it up. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it, like it's, it's fine. Like, the first couple of times, it's like, oh, my God. And then after a while, you're just like, this is, this is actually really fun. Yeah. It's really rad. So it did, it did come with like a little wooden stick you can go Yeah, and it's like that first stage is like jamming that in like decently into the ground, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, take some time over that when, when it's not lit. Just don't be a twat about it. It's, mm. it's really easy that's, to that's not... That's maybe the problem, isn't To it? not fuck it up and to also not be scared of it. Like the, the first couple of times lighting it, there's the, there's the age old light run back. Oh shit, is it lit? 
and then, <laughs> and then oh and then, then it goes you know but but like you know there's, there's been a couple of times i think where i lit one and it didn't actually end up going off yeah so you sort of left it for what a really long time That's and then that was just bucket of water on it and then sort of gingerly pointing it away from myself, lay it down, and bury it with some soil, and just left it. I remember seeing some... <laughs> <laughs> and then three days later, in, yeah. <laughs> Never look at the it. shed explodes. I remember like, seeing as a kid uh, a show, and I can't remember if it was a firework or just some other explosive, but some guy had his hand blown up oh, by God. firework or whatever. And I always remember they had a close-up of his hand. Why? And they'd taken a couple of his toes as replacement fingers and put them on his hand. So Is that better? He, well, he had like a his big thumb was where like oh no, his big toe was where his thumb should be. Oh. So he had like three digits on his hand. I'm not sure. About You're that. laughing. What are you? Laughing? I'm not laughing. That's a horror. That's laugh. horrible. Yeah, I'm not like la- I was laughing with horror. Yeah. So think, I think um, that's why I'm terrified of. Ali of... famously told me about a, a fireworks show. I think she went to or at least heard about, which was in Bournemouth, where they did it from a boat out at sea. Oh god! From god. the beach. And like the first one just sort of careened off sideways and set fire to the boat and everyone was just jumping <laughs> off into the sea. And then it was just burning out there. But everyone was just like, I guess we'll keep watching. And it was just exploding. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. There was like a proper like city display in Glasgow a couple of years ago. Right. And it was supposed to be an hour long firework show. And they all went off at once. <laughs> and it just Boom. lit up the sky. <laughs> Just for two seconds, it was. It daylight. was. It was amazing. <laughs> it was. Pro- there's footage of it. It's brilliant. It just lights up the whole sky. That's fantastic. As a, uh, I think um, my family in the time that we've had dogs, they've always just been terrified. Oh yeah, yeah. Dogs, dogs, dogs hate it. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our cats themselves. always used to hate yeah. it as well. Mm. We'd lock them well, in they the don't house. know what it is, do they? They're probably like, what the hell is that? It's gunfire. Yeah. It's danger. Well, even if like now that Finn, like our family, a family dog, uh, if there's even like a thunderstorm, if there's like a crack. He'll immediately just go hide under a table. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. safest place to be. I actually slightly disagree with Matt Dyson in the sense that I love a home outdoor in your garden mm. firework show, but just do it responsibly. You know, like think about your neighbours. Do it at like half six, seven o'clock. Yeah, finish by eight, morning. nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After a big party, <laughs> <laughs> after you've thrown some plates into your neighbours' windows. Um, yeah, just uh, but you do it right. It's a lot of fun. I yeah, it. I agree. I agree. As long as you're not a prick about it, basically. Yeah. I have a good sparkler, me. Oh, oh yeah. I have, I've not, Gotta I've, have a sparkler. I've not had a decent sparkler in ages. You are actually. a maverick. Renegade. Maybe there'll be sparklers tonight. Will there be sparklers tonight? I hope so. We're going to a fireworks show, oh. which is officially licensed. I Yay. think. <laughs> Ma- Ma- <laughs> Matt Dyson. They're license. charging us to get in, so I assume it is. Good, good. License for alcohol. License. Oh, we've got a, we've got a live one. A live. Oh, we've got a live one. While we're doing the things. From from Danny. D A N I. D A N I. Ah, Danny, friend of the show. Danny. Danny. Woo woo. Who has just written? I hate it when someone else spits while talking, but ah. by accident, and it lands like on your lip, and you both free and notice, <laughs> and are too darn polite to say anything. I'm car- I'm pulling this off very well, aren't I? This this language, uh, and your eyes both have alarm in them, but you carry on faking your way through the conversation anyway until they or you dare make an excuse to leave. Ah, oh, we've all been there. I don't think well, anybody I know likes being spit on. No, no. I spat on you the other day. Yeah, you <laughs> spit on me a lot, actually. Uh, and uh, I'm just happy to be involved. <laughs> I, I, te- I tend to tell people if they spat at me, I'm like, you're spitting at me, man. <laughs> Stop yeah, well, it. Well, John told me. Um, and I think if someone spits uh, by accident and it lands in your mouth, <laughs> then they'll... Um, <laughs> you're I legally think, married now. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're basically yeah. just getting off with each other, aren't you? Like... <laughs> Oh, but man, like if it landed on like your lip, that's yeah, a, that's that is, that is gross. Because you can, what, what you do you feel do? Because if you, you don't yeah, want, you don't want to lick I mean, it off, and then if you, uh, I, I, yeah, you don't want to lick it off. I think you might have that natural instant reaction. You just get a little, and you're, oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> like I feel like I would have to say something like, oh, thanks for that kind of thing. You know, like I'd have to say something. Not, not quite the same. But when when I was in Peru, uh, we had to <laughs> oh, <God>. bear <laughs> with me. We had to uh, pop into like the. Uh, I don't know, it was like a visa place. So when we were in Lima, we'd just been there a couple of days, we had to go and hand in some papers to show we were legally allowed to be, allowed to be in the country. Mm. And it was like the 12th floor or something. And they sent me up, you know, sure. Master of John. Languages and everything. Send our best man up. <laughs> so I go with the paper. And for some reason, it was it, it was humid enough outside. It was kind of muggy. But they go in and it was just, it was boiling. Like It seemed like they have a heating on. <laughs> I was like, how are you coping? Like, you're wearing suits. And I was just like sweating so, so much. And of course, you know, I can't speak any Peruvian, you know, <laughs> Portuguese. That's weird. Uh, the guy there had a, some English, so the conversation was already a little stilted. And I remember, like, I was there for a few minutes. I handed like the paper over. And I just remember, like, he was like kind of working, 
and I started handing this over, and then this drop of sweat just went. And it's like, from you from me and just like landed right in the middle of the paper he was working on <laughs> and we both saw it like we both yeah, were yeah. Like, oh. clock that and then he I remember like he didn't say anything but his hand just reached over to like the air conditioning and just kind of turned <laughs> <laughs> turned it up a few degrees yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I don't really know. How can we... We can't spin gold out of that. Like, no, I, I agree. Nobody likes being spit on, but I do, yeah, I tend to say something if it does happen. Uh, like I you, think I'd probably say something as you well. You get really aggressive and you do. Just spat on me. I, I do. So I just go, <laughs> just spitting on me, man. You shit. I want the news, not the weather. Whee. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, a good that's one. pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have one final hate. Oh, oh really? If, uh, Another come, live one? Uh, well, sort of live. 54 minutes ago. Oh, so, cool. so, 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 no. so, so news. <laughs> so news. No, it's it's not... coming while we've been recording. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> perfume ads oh so we're going back to commercialism lots of be- this is from Chris by the way not me okay um, <laughs> lots of beautiful <laughs> comment on my own status <laughs> lots of beautiful people prancing around in black and white and or slow motion while saying random words and phrases unrelated to the product tell me what it smells like or nothing at all imagine says, that says Chris if we had super literal perfume adverts like it smells a bit like a flower and also tarmac we think you'll like it a bit <laughs> It's is, better than that other one we yeah. did. But you know, like there's that condition, uh, synesthesia, where your your senses get muddled up. Yeah, so you, you might hear a bit of you, you might hear a bit of music. You always see. Like, <laughs> 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 hey, hey, how you doing, big oh, chap? What's wrong with you? It's a bad day. <laughs> do you want to talk about it? Just keep going. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, where were we? Yes, so synesthesia, like you might, you might hear a bit of music and go, oh, oh, roses, you know, and smell oh, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I think like if you're making a perfume advert, you're trying. Yeah, yeah. To simulate trying that. to force that until the day when the TV will exude a smell. That's a bad day. That's a bad day. <laughs> yeah. uh, People like, are going to abuse that, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. definitely. What you like, you know? Oh, this perfume—it's got notes of like oak and. Uh... Also, I don't feel like my TV experience is missing smell. Like I don't. Oh, I wish I could smell that. Yeah, and also because like a smell is what well, is particulate matter in the air, isn't it? So you know that when a TV has like a smell of vision, there's going to be a kind of hose involved. <laughs> Speaking of spitting in people's face, <laughs> yeah, and please, please keep your mouth open at the same time. Too fully. <laughs> like Doritos ad comes on, like why does this yeah. water taste like sadness <laughs> and cool original? <laughs> Salt and cool original. Oh my god! Um, uh, perfume adverts are pretentious. Yeah, to they max. are. They are just they're they're like they're like I think some executive thought what we need to do is make the visual equivalent of a poem. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't. There's a bit of overlap with like car adverts as well, isn't, uh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like how do you convey the joy of a car? Some car adverts are really good though. True, true. Yeah. Like Honda tend, tend to do Honda well. mini mini adventures. Yeah, used to be good. You should do that with perfume. perfume. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a Jador adventure. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a QR code. Yeah, I've enjoy. got a bottle of perfume here. Your wife might like it if you're struggling with Christmas presents. <laughs> Cheers then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it looks pretty enough. Yeah. I was on a. I remember being on a family holiday, and that's when I learned that, like, if you expect the worst, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, are we going to the beach? No, we're going somewhere else. And we're driving past a perfume factory, and I'm like, I think we're going to the perfume factory. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome to the interlude for A Show Called Hate, episode 6. I certainly hope you're enjoying the show so far. Uh, I know a personal highlight for me was that uh, je ne sais quoi joke, of which I am ridiculously proud, and will probably be harping on about till the day I die. Uh, Yeah, not a massive amount of housekeeping to get through today, so it probably won't take me too long uh, before I deposit you back into the entertainment and we'll back to the loves, which, you know... It can't be hate all the time. So yeah, what is there to say? Uh, a big thank you to those who continue to leave ratings and reviews on our iTunes page. I mean, we are but one small podcast trying to make a difference in the world. And uh, But yeah, fairly fairly proud of how, how we've done so far. And it's all because of you and you, know, you guys taking the time to leave feedback. So a big thank you to all of you. Every little helps, as Tesco teaches us. No, wait. That was Asuka. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so if you would like to get on board, uh, do remember to uh, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. That really does mean the world. Uh, you may have noticed, uh, as mentioned in the podcast itself, we have some snazzy new artwork uh, depicting us, our beautiful faces uh, in all their black and white glory, uh, apoplectic, uh, screaming with rage, uh, as is 
you know, as is fitting for the tone of our podcast. If you ever want to get in touch uh, to share your loves and hates, we always have uh, Twitter and the hashtags, as we mention each time. That's hashtag show called love and hashtag show called hate. Uh, most importantly, we do also have an email address. You can reach us at a show called hate at bigpunchstudios.com. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, which is Big Punch Studios. Simply give us a search. Um, we've yet to fully, I don't know, integrate how you might be able to get in touch in that way, but we're working on it. Like I said, it's still early days. Uh, if you are a fan of Big Punch in general and the podcasts we do, um, you may be pleased to know that um, the Cuckoo's RPG podcast will be returning soon. We had a blast doing uh, season one. It was a bit of an experiment. We didn't really know how it was going to pan out, but we're really keen to get back into season two. And, you know, as and when Nick and I actually have a spare moment in between doing this and this and all our comics and junk, uh, we will be continuing with our Evangelion... Evangelion? What's wrong with me? Good grief. Our Evangelion rewatch podcast. So, yeah, I hope it doesn't seem like we have dialed down our podcasts of late they're still very important to us and we have every intention of keeping them going it's more a case of reassessing refining and thinking like you know how can we best do this it's quality over quantity and we are quite busy because alongside our podcasts we are of course also making comics comics galore like um after i think and seven string both of which are currently being serialized on their respective websites you can find them at www.bigpunchstudios.com and uh, of course extraversal which is our big quarterly magazine uh we're currently working on issue 12 which will be wrapping up year three uh can't believe we've made it this this far um rather excitingly now we have made it this far we're about to dive into year four and you know hyperbole aside it's gonna be something pretty big and pretty epic going on there for Big Punch. So if you want to get in on that, uh, you can access digital copies via our website. You can uh, pay whatever you want from zero pounds, that's entirely your prerogative, through to, well, pick a number. You can just go as high as you want. But yeah, they are essentially free if you want them. Uh, however, if you did want to, you know, toss a few pennies our way, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, if you would like to receive a physical copy of Extraversal in the post every three months directly to your door, uh, you can become a patron uh, at the lowest level on our patron. You get access to Uh, downloads of all our podcasts, Uh, you get news and updates uh, at the highest level, you get all that, not to mention digital goodies for all our comics, but you also get a physical copy of Extraversal uh, in the post to you. So again, thank you. Uh, That is all the housekeeping, I swear. I will now uh, take you back to, uh, you know, myself and my two brothers in hate. Uh, We hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, Thanks for all your support. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the remainder of the episode. I love... Lead us in. Take us home. Grabber machines at the seaside. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> They're brilliant. Okay. I love them. Okay, yeah. They're great. Yeah, I'm uh, really good at them as well. Like, Are you good at them? Yeah, I've like won you... I've won upwards of eight toys. Were you grabbing what? a toy? On, a, on grabber machines. Or grabbing, like, a ball containing a toy? Is that grab a, a toy. Grab a toy. Grab yeah, to grabbing a plushy toy is a bit easier, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's great fun. I got, I got... I got two in three goes once. Do they work or are they endlessly rigged? The thing is, they are rigged anything. because they, they sort of pulse when they get to the top sometimes. They'll just open by like half an inch. Right. You, if you look at them carefully, as I have over a number of years, um, <laughs> you'll see them just go, and they do let go sometimes. Okay. Yeah, because also sometimes they'll grab and you're like, oh, I've got it. But then they'll just like yeah, exactly. loosely just slide What's off. What's the pro strat then yeah. to make that work? Um, loads just of money. keep just yeah, loads of money. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> well, one time I went to a beer festival with my brother-in-law. You and uh, me, I know, right? Um, and because they live down in Minehead, where they have lots of these machines, um, and we were trying to win a toy for my niece. We were there for about an hour and a half on the same machine because she desperately wanted this toy. How much money did you put into that? Quite a lot. Okay. I do not want to think about how much. Bear money. in mind, my brother-in-law owns a teddy bear shop. <laughs> right. There we go. Yeah. But after that, I've had a very good run of success on these machines. Two in three goes. Maybe you broke the seal. Like maybe once you played it a hundred times, you just yeah. become very good. Well, I was off running down the street celebrating when I got one in the end. What, Get come on! What I hear is that inside the machine, there's a sort of uh, mechanical counter. Yes, that, that's and only on a true. certain play will it pay out. Oh, essentially, so will the gripper like, actually as long grip? As you actually, as long as you actually grip it properly. As so well. what you were saying, like the, the fact that it's it just pulses at the top, yeah. some, and that'll be yeah because of that. 
Yeah. yeah. But the watch- thrill of winning is is wonderful. But apparently a pro, a pro strat is to watch someone put loads of money into a machine, mm. give up, right. and then get on then. Because oh, you'll maybe okay. only be three or four away from actually the, but the win. But that also could be a myth. It could be been propagated Absolutely. Just by the same people. companies. Yeah. The thing is, the actual proper go inverted commas could be if you, when you miss the toy, so you'd never know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah absolutely, so, absolutely true. The um, I remember once we uh, we made a mass journey down to the southeast of England to visit a friend of ours. This yeah. happened. Will Train. Oh we'll yes, I, friend, no, Will I know. Train. I know that name. Yes. And a lot of you went to see a football game on the way. That also happened. I swear it happened. I was okay, like, I uh, believe you. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not having this. I like this, not for me. So, oh, I yeah, remember. there we go. Yes. So me and no, the, me you. and a couple of other people who didn't go yes, to remember. the game went down to the seaside, uh, and nice. we went to a an amusement arcade on the edge of the seaside. It was one of the most depressing experiences I've ever had. In they my always life, are. Actually. You were in Margate, weren't you? We were indeed. Oh, well, I wasn't going to shame the poor town. Oh, yeah. wait, oh, I will. Margate's like the town of yesterday. There we go. Okay. The town of yesterday. I have friends who live in Margate, so it's fine. Oh, that's fine there. Okay. That makes it okay. But we played, like, we played the old, we thought, oh, this will be great. We'll go crazy. We'll play all the machines. And I think we, we got, like, 250 tickets at the end. Oh, and, nice. And that got us... A pencil one, eraser. A bouncy ball. One gummy hamber- hamburger suite. Like, oh, you yeah. know, the size of a 50 pence piece, which oh, we tore God. in half and ate. <laughs> <laughs> really? That does sound desperate. How many tickets? Like, like 250. Yeah. Oh, they shortchange you. Yeah. And then they had like, you know, Pretty bad. you win like an iPod and you need like two million tickets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go to the arcade every day for five years and you it's might like those, get an iPod. Yeah, like, what's like those um, shove... The penny. sense of achievement. Two penny machines. Yeah, oh, those God, ones yeah. Those moving back and forth. Moving back like and forth, yeah. There's like a shelf of coins. Yeah. yeah. It gets They're cool. Over. They are cool. And, and I machines. put a lot of money into them. I do. I don't know how, like... I've never seen anyone win on... Well, on I mean, I, I've, I've often... Like a shelf will break, and I'll get loads of two P's, and I'll get another like again, twenty minutes of play, yeah. and it's that constant drip feeding you of more potential play. It's the time. thrill of winning. Yeah, it's the thrill of winning. I I do. I agree that I love an arcade. Mm. I don't know whether I could agree with you that I love a grabber machine because oh, I just feel like when I'm you being get the toy off. though, and you give it to your niece who didn't spend any of her money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the look of joy on the her look face. of joy on her she, face. She didn't get you anything. <laughs> she didn't get me anything in return. I uh, yeah I, I like I get the idea I get the idea of winning big might be good yeah but like yeah I, until it's happened to me <laughs> big wins like I, I there mean, might be a grabber machine tonight there might be know, actually there might know, be yeah. there might be if so we'll play yeah we should we'll pull back there might also be a terrifying uh, like uh, ride that came in on the back of a truck mm. we... yeah there'll probably be both I remember at uni going to like a little carnival and. Uh, Went on a, oh, no. it's like a spinning drum. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, and yeah. you're on the inside. Yeah, you stand on yeah. the outside, and then it lifts up and goes sideways, yeah. and it hurts so much. Yeah. Like the G forces were incredible, oh. and I was like, I'm gonna die. This, is, like, this is the end. And somehow, don't ask me how, like, because I know I'm spinning quite fast at like 90 degrees to the world, and I somehow saw the guy running it, <laughs> and he was playing Spider Solitaire on his computer, <laughs> yeah, like a little laptop. How I was did like, you see it? I don't know. I was like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> And my last, my last experience is seeing some a carnival gentleman playing Spider Solitaire. There was one a in Nottingham, gentleman. wasn't there? Do you remember that one in Nottingham? Oh, jeez. It was one of the ones, it's like you get in a two-seater and it's on a couple of chains. We were on a stag and, do. And we are on a stag do and it gets really, really, really high and just spins you around. And you're sort of, you're sort uh, yeah. of flying out you go from out it. go out on a, yeah. Oh. But it was, it, was, it was the most unprofessional setup I think I've oh, ever seen. Oh, it was terrifying. Seen. Like, absolutely terrifying. Like, um, it's bad. Like, sometimes you do get this kind of like it's like a two person yeah. swing it was damn yeah. high and it was going, damn high and you just swinging around going oh this is cool this one if not 50 feet 100 foot it was it was so nighttime, high and it, it was like a set up by you know a travelling arcade whatever yeah, it was yeah and it's rickety it's it was like, really yeah. rickety metal and string and it seemed like we were drunk. I used to go on all this stuff so much as a kid but now I just wouldn't touch it so I was just thinking like I don't want to die like, yeah. I really don't want to die I'm I don't want so I don't high. want this to be the way I die yeah. <laughs> it was horrible like it was absolutely horrible I like, instantly regret this decision well Pigs was like even before we'd gone up he he, t- <laughs> he was terrified he was going oh I don't know about this you hear stories <laughs> you hear stories thanks, thanks Pigs and it's rare that Pigs is actually the wisest person in the room but yeah yeah, yeah. fair point <laughs> well, my uh, my my love is very simple. Uh, I I've I've come to enjoy in the past oh. week a good mashup. Oh, of, uh, yeah. of various songs. Wonderful, stuck together. Uh, I discovered a, a very very cool Ghostbusters remix. You lovely, did, which is badass. And badass. I then followed the trail mm. to the uh, creator. Yes, and I can never pronounce his surname. It's like Neil. Sissi Guerra or something like that. Is that, is that short for something? <laughs> Chicheriga. 
Cher- Cherigu. And he's really good. Very good. Like he does like these he's done like three big albums. I think one's called like Mouth Moods, Mouth Sounds. Oh, and Mouth Silence. They're like the three. I understand. And they're like it's like an hour long album, give mm. or take. And all the tracks just flow into each other. Yeah. And it's just crazy mashups. And they're really good. Like um and he'll take like a, a really badass song but mix it with like something really sweet and simply. Uh. He did um he turned like uh, he mixed like YMCA with like the Inception soundtrack, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this epic, like colossal. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, and also, he did like a uh, Back in Black, but mixed with like some. Oh, God, that was amazing like, Canadian yeah. love song. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and yeah, I'm sorry. That's the most simple, boring. That's fine. Uh, that's I, fine. I accept it. But yeah. I enjoy a good mashup you have, as much you as the next man. You've played me some of those, and they are very good. I'm coming to love the funk, basically. I mean, you know this. I've been like a, a. We listened to a mashup back in the day. Was it a guy called Party Ben? Party Ben. And yeah. he did a mashup of something. Boulevard of Broken Songs or something like that. Oh, and it was. Um, oh, what but, was the, no. know, that song by that Oasis? Band. And the Strokes. Then, Wasn't yeah. There, there's a song by The Strokes. Anyway. And Dizzy Rascal. Let's not yeah. talk about things we can't remember. But no, but like, <laughs> he does a couple of. Um, he's, he's done a couple of Wonderwall remixes oh. and he did like uh, Wonderwall mixed with like uh, You Spin Me Round Round Baby Right Round that <laughs> yeah. was really good that was yeah. really good actually. and he's done, a, he's done a dedicated Wonderwall remix just called Wonderwall like he's just <laughs> taking like all the vowels out yeah. yeah and it's insane like it's yeah you have to listen to it's it it's a layered recommending it I will play it's our it. official recommendation I'll put a link in the description yeah oh. well my love is um, really job specific vehicles <laughs> right right like a Thunderbird so- Kind of, yeah. It's well, yeah. If I think it plays into it, <laughs> I was being facetious. <laughs> you know, when you're at an airport and your and your plane is parked and you look out onto the sort of car park area and there's all these weird little vehicles driving around and they've all got one really specific purpose. Like yeah. there's that vehicle that is just a thing that rocks up next to the plane and then just has extendable legs that just goes up just yes. so it can like load stuff into the door. And then there's that other one that just drives around and it's just like a flatbed thing and it's just yeah. for like another vehicle to sit on. And then I was at, um, weirdly, I was at like a, a timber warehouse recently <laughs> oh, well, for my wow. job. Okay. Always <laughs> hanging out at that timber warehouse. Love the timber warehouse. And there were these vehicles. They're proper like full blown <laughs> like trucks, basically. They've got engines, they've got wheels, they've got a little cabin, steering wheel and everything. But they, they're just the weirdest shape just to hold logs. Yeah. And it's got this weird long body just to hold logs. And it's like, they don't have number plates or anything because you can't drive them anywhere else because they're ridiculous. They look so stupid. They look like Tetris blocks <laughs> on, on wheels. Sorry, I just can't. They're get... just stupid. I'm still fixated on you just hanging out at the lumber yard. Again. <laughs> like, Whenever I can get down there, I just get down there. Oh, yeah. You, you come home and you're wearing like a heavy overcoat and Ali's like, hello, dear. Walks out on your sleeve and there's sawdust. <laughs> like, oh, no. A bit of bark in, my, in the palm oh, of my Oh, nothing. <laughs> you've, been at, you've been down at the timber yard again, haven't you? No. No. <laughs> But the MDF. Oh god, I've got a problem. <laughs> She's like, what's that? Cedar wood. <laughs> <laughs> you said you'd stop at pine. <laughs> uh, I I agree. I I enjoy a comically shaped a specific vehicle. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of one now. Um, I mean a forklift. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. But it's like we're entering. Things. That's a gateway drug. I feel a forklift yeah. is like you know. I was uh, they're, they're doing some roadworks near the station where I got I get off work and get off for work in the morning. And they've been digging up a road, and I was walking uh, in, and there was like a diddy like um, digger. Yeah. So it's like you know, like oh yeah, I love these. It's like it came out of a capsule he, toy. He, he was kind of like he was like he was driving over like uneven terrain, and <laughs> oh, like no. he was trying to lift something, and then the the entire the entire thing just kind of teetered, like, <laughs> and, and the whole thing fell forward, and he had to catch himself on the arm. Oh um, wow! And, like, Christ. and the, then his mate his mate was just kind of uh, standing by in a hard hat, goes like, lads, 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 classic Ralph. Yeah. There's there's like a whole um, extreme sports wing. For JCB drivers, yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, they'll like score score mad hoops deep in the paint, you know, <laughs> on a basketball creeps. court. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, you forget that Nick was a professional basketball player yeah. in the early. He Olympics. learned this all down at the lumber yard. All this, <laughs> all this lingo. I used to play timber ball. It's really painful. <laughs> <laughs> just lob wood at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not bounce at all. Um, it wasn't even a ball. <laughs> you can go to like JC block. You can go to JCB World. Can't yeah, you? there's the theme that park. Whole, yeah. and all the rides are like adapted yeah. diggers. You guys sit in. A scoop. I see. I got like a one with like a massive scoop, and they filled the scoop with like Children. roller coaster seats, <laughs> oh. so you can actually sit in the scoop, and they'll just kind of like twirl yeah. around. <laughs> they just get, get in the ticket float, go there, going. Christ. He's playing Spider <laughs> Solitaire. Like, yeah, yeah. playing yeah. Spider Solitaire. It's like man and boys. Like, I think spent forty years <laughs> digging holes to, <laughs> to end up like this. Spin tourists around. Get back to work, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Well, I mean, that's adorable. Who could? Thank who, you. Who could disagree with such a thing? 
Give us a, give us a love. Well, me. I've only got, rather indicatively, I've only got one love and oh, four hates. World. But I've got one love. One who's, love. Who's from, uh, which is from Matt Dyson. No hey, relation. Matt Dyson. Welcome um, back. He says, the TV channels that sell you things... Like QVC and that. Like, I think that's what he means. Right, Beth, yeah. Nothing better than watching someone talk about how much time you can save for an also expanding ladder for over 30 <laughs> minutes. It has two selling points and yet they keep going. Yeah, <laughs> I do agree with that. It's very entertaining watching QVC. And you know what? Desperately trying to sell out. You can add to that by going on YouTube and typing in something like QVC bloopers because there are some amazing classics. <laughs> of, like, cause of course, it's solid live the whole yeah, time. Yeah. And they just have to keep talking about products. And there's like great shots of just people like falling over <laughs> and like exercise machines breaking mid stride. It's amazing. Do you know what you don't see anymore? Like when we were at uni, there was a big craze for like late night live phone in quiz shows. Yeah. Where you could win money live on air. Yes, true. So you yeah. come back from like a night on the town and you turn on the TV and it's like it's like a three by three crossword. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's like B space N, and the clue is like a man's name. <laughs> ban! Yeah. It's Ban! And he goes, it's, it's Daryl from Canterbury. What, 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 what do you reckon it is, Daryl? Like, is, uh, is, it, is it Bun? <laughs> no, it's not Bun, but we'll be having another caller in 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. But we used to call them as well, and we yeah. never got through. No, we're just drunk at someone's house. <laughs> Let's call them, come on! How much did that cost? Probably, probably a lot. It didn't cost me anything, I think it cost the bill payer quite a bit. I don't think <laughs> it was the bill payer's position. Yeah. I don't think I ever saw it, but you talk about like bloopers, and this this just went out live. But yeah, it was like this, the lady presenting it just throwing up like live on yes. it. Like yeah, they, this I, was QVC. I think it was, no, it was um, yeah. this one of the like quiz. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, it yeah. was like it was like a quiz show, and she was just there's like a screen to her right, and she's just sat on a high stool, and she just she starts to look a little bit queasy, and then it's just like <laughs> it, it just without bending over, it just pulls out of her mouth and down the front of her dress. <laughs> She's, she's a really glamorous lady as well. <laughs> and it's that, it looks like spaghetti hoops. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> spaghetti hoops don't look good going in. No. Like, we've got to go on look YouTube at... after we've done this. <laughs> a child did that at the supermarket earlier. We were getting a big shop. Uh, and there was like grandparents like pushing like a, a, a little baby around. And the baby turned. It had like one of those angelic smiles. And I was like, oh, that's quite cute. Just op- And just opened its mouth and just... just oh, quite... yeah. Babies babies don't care. They'll just yeah. be sick wherever. They just Liquid, open, just open the channel. Yeah. Face. Like, oh, oh, it's horrible. Seeing the milk in reverse. Oh, that's not good. You don't want to see that. See the milk in reverse. Have some respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be a title of this episode. Seeing the milk in reverse. I uh, <laughs> got some good titles for this one. Yeah. I'm talking about um, like kind of shopping channels. It's it's nice when they 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 try to go above and beyond and they try to turn it into like a sitcom. <laughs> one of the best ones I've ever seen was like for the Magic Bullet. Which is like a, a blender. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Still sell them now. And it's like a, it's like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air's kitchen. If oh, you can picture yeah. it. Yeah. And it's like a couple. Like I always uh, thought that kitchen was amazing. <laughs> it's a very, oh, very nice open plan kitchen. <laughs> Basically, yeah, and like lots um, of space for the live audience. Like, <laughs> the, wife, the wife comes in, and it's like. Uh, Oh, Charles, you're awake. What are you doing? He goes, oh, hello, Deborah. I'm making some delicious smoothies. And, you know, like, smoothies? That's not like you. What's well, that? What's and, a smoothie? And, and it's like, I, I, I Shut your mouth and I'll tell you. <laughs> Charles, you're scaring me. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> You've changed. Um, so, but then the point is that other characters come in. Oh, and they get a laugh track. When they yeah, and, and, and it's kind of yeah. like, oh, it's it's Ben. You know, three letters, men's name. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> and then they come in, and someone will come in and go like, oh, you know, I, I you know, I can't eat fruit after the operation. And we go, well, don't worry. After I got the lump removed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> don't really chuck a steak in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can substitute strawberry for chicken breast. You'll never, <laughs> you'll never know the difference. And then, like, this guy, the schlub, for lack of a better word, comes in. And you can picture him. He's like kind of balding, middle aged, overweight. And he's wearing like a suit, but he's untucked and he's unshaven. This looks really dishevelled. Yeah. And everyone goes, like, oh, heavy night, Brian. You know, again. You know, like, nobody's talking about Brian's drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> This was his moment to open up. Brian comes in, he sits on like the kitchen bar. He's like, I just want to die. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> what you need is this. He said, you know, you can blend paracetamol right into <laughs> <laughs> so, He had so many magic bullets. Uh, good times. Oh, I miss that family. <laughs> they're all dead. So the the bullet family. overdose. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Bullet. <laughs> yeah. Char- At home with the bullets. Charles finally found... The one magic bullet that, <laughs> that really mattered. Could solve all his problems. <laughs> it's and the not, new Nutri-Bullet. 
<laughs> on that note. On that hilarious note. Should we call it a day? That'll yeah, do. which one out? Uh, oh, <laughs> I think you might be hate again. I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I, I, don't, know. I don't know this time because we've had actual genuine debate this yeah. time. That's true, yeah. We've also had some good, good belly laughs on both sides of the equation. Jolly good. The question is, uh, did uh, Breakfast in the Morning win out over the uh, magic bullet? In terms of a laugh, that's <laughs> you nearly died. I was in trouble for a moment yeah, there. You were talking about, in the talking about yeah. um, eating dick. I, <laughs> I'm feeling quite, um, I'm feeling quite happy, and optimistic, <laughs> upbeat. I'm think... excited for the fireworks later, so I'll go with love. I don't feel the need for a bullet yeah. right now. <laughs> Let's go have a smoothie and uh, call it a day. <laughs> yeah. So, do we have a sign out yet? Yes. Uh, Here we go. Um, Here we go. Um, oh, it, um, uh, it's been great. We love. The uh, the fact that love has won. You know, uh, I get wild if I don't get a bullet in the morning. I eat dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>